ओके सो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड द सेंट्रल डॉक्मा ऑफ मॉलिकुलर बायोलॉजी ओके इन दिस वीडियो एंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ जीन सी ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर दैट आवर कैरेक्टर लाइक यू लिसन ऑलवेज इज कोडेड फ्रॉम जीन मे बी नॉट वन जीन बट मल्टीपल जीन्स रिमेम्बर आवर कैरेक्टर इज कोडेड ना आवर कैरेक्टर is the response of function of proteins our character is the response of the function of the proteins whether you are black blue eyed you have black hair or brown hair or you are tall you are short a plant is having what kind of fruit or seed or leaves so all these things uh as i was saying so you know all these things will be determined by those are known as our character characters have different kinds of traits like blood group blood group is a character and it has traits like a a b or b or o like skin color is a character black or white is a trait now all the, the character difference is because how the difference of the function of proteins now the fact is this that actually all these characters are function of proteins suppose i ha- grow how much tall that is dependent obviously on my hormones but then my hormonal expression is again dependent on my gene that what kind of protein will be re- uh, 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 released what kind of chemical signaling will occur cell signaling will occur okay which will make my hormone or pituitary release my hormone so all these are basically everything every character is inside the gene now we know that every character comes because of the functions of the functional protein now you see gene is what suppose this is a dna okay now one part of the dna you take one strand you the strand opens up and one strand of the dna contains a particular sequence of a t g c c t a g t suppose this sequence of lots of base pair not only this much base pair my copy has this much space so i am writing this much base pair of only this much base pair which will give rise to one protein not multiple proteins which will give rise to one protein is known as gene that is known as gene the sequence which will give rise to one protein so dna will give rise to protein yes yes sir dna will give rise to protein sir how before that if this question arise in your mind you should know that proteins are the combination of amino acids one amino acid another 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 amino acid and lots of amino acids combine with one another one another one another one another and form a peptide chain right and the peptide chain then intertwines among themselves forming alpha helix or beta pleated sheet this kind of structure names of structure actually alpha helix beta pleated sheet okay and these are secondary structures they get intertwined among themselves lots of bonding and many thing and the globular protein structure comes out now protein structure can be deduced from primary to secondary this is primary structure peptide chain they wind up among themselves forming alpha helix type of structure or beta pleated type of structure which you have you will either learn for class 11 boys or which you have already learned for class 12 boys so alpha this kind of structure is secondary structure so primary structure is there secondary structure then there is tertiary structure much more globular structure lots of alpha helix and beta pleated sheet together intertwine among themselves and form the secondary sorry tertiary structure and there can be a quaternary structure too much more improved structure okay so these are all the structures of protein but basically what is there basically it is a if you open up the tertiary structure you will get alpha helix and beta pleated sheet and if you open up you will get a peptide chain only so basically the peptide chain is formed by the combination of amino acids okay different amino acids there are various kinds of amino acids like lysine arginine histidine valine uh, um, uh, alanine 
okay lots of kind of amino acids are there which is there in class 11 now the fact is there that these amino acids different different types of amino acids if you don't know i want to show you the structure okay then your idea will be more clear these are some amino acids i will focus my camera see this is a structure of amino acid 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 this is a structure of these are structures of amino acids like for example if you see that what happens is there is one carbon atom related to that carbon atom or linked to that carbon atom there is a COOH group and a um, NH hold on I'm sorry for the delay anyway so COOH group and a NH2 group and in the other one there is always a H and here there is a R. The R can be anything, can be any alkyl or cycloalkyl group, means cyclic alkyl group or maybe a nitrogen containing ring, maybe a nitrogen containing ring, okay, maybe a sulfur containing uh, alkyl group, lots of things can be different. So on the basis, basic all the amino acid is this, 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 this one carbon they have that is the chiral carbon, you know, all the different groups are attached to the carbon. That means that carbon is known as chiral carbon. So the chiral carbon and this and on the basis of the nature of the R, what type of R, the amino acid is classified. And what happens when peptide chain forms, this C, C double bond OH and this C and H and there is the R and there is the R and this is the uh, NH2 okay and this is the R and here is the NH2 and here is the R what happens is there fr from here the NH2 and COH link they link up okay because of the covalent bond forms resonating structure covalent bond forms and what happens this bond is known as peptide bond oh actually water goes out okay and the bond forms so the peptide bond is formed and in this way all the amino acids will be linked suppose one amino acid one other amino acid another amino acid another amino acid another amino acid another amino acid and they will be linked like this by peptide bond okay so in this way like peptide bond they will be linked and the r group will be juling here i mean they will be hanging like this different r groups different nature of r groups okay so all this different nature of R groups will be hanging here, okay. Mm, so in this way, okay. And hence there will be forces of attraction and repulsion and different interactions, specific, non-specific interactions and specific interactions will be there between the molecules and the, or the or R molecule and the uh, elements that are present are forming the ring or the straight structure. And hence there will be intertwingling forming alpha helix and beta pleated sheet okay and hence there will be secondary structure so actually what kind of structure and on the basis of that the tertiary structure will form so actually what kind of structure will the protein form what kind of structure will the protein form will depend on what kind of amino acids are linked see these are the amino acids all of them has a middle c all of them all of them has a middle c it just depends on middle C, NH3, SEO minus, C, C, all. and the R group, the R group is here slightly colored, uh, I mean slightly shaded, you see, the R group, R group is here H, all these structures are there, all these structures are there, okay, all these structures, R groups are there, different, different types of structure, and they are classified on the basis of R group, they must have, can have a polar, uncharged R group, they can have a positively charged R group. These are basic amino acids. Lysine, lysine, arginine, histidine. Having positively R groups are basic amino acids. Some have... Some have uh, this uh, non-polar non aliphatic AH, CH3, this kind of R group. Okay, and some have aromatic R group. So, 
these are the various structures these are the 20 basic amino acids okay oh some have uh, negatively charged r group these are known as the acidic amino acids aspartic acid and glutamic acid these are uh, you know non polar uncharged r group so all these types of amino acids now before you can imagine that how variety can be there in this r and what can be the variety of you know uh, chemical interactions and um, uh, And hence there will be there will be variety in the chemical interactions and hence there will be what I can say the different ways of forming the protein structure and hence the function and the structure of the protein will also vary. Hence the structure and the function because depending on basic what kind of R group are one by one or side by side depending on that only there will be a uh, what we can say there will be a uh, you know structure formation and uh, it will differ from another protein because of the different sequence of the R groups different different amino acids sitting one after the other and different different R groups being one after the other here suppose whatever the sequence or different R groups are suppose arginine, histidine, lysine, valine, alanine in this way they will have a particular chemical interactions they will form a particular kind of protein structure because of the difference in the alpha helix beta sheet and uh, you know third uh, tertiary structure and quaternary structure and then there will be this which will have maybe arginine, uh, valine, lysine and uh, maybe aspartic acid and they will form a different kind of structure and their structure will be different. So basically what do you understand? You understand it depends on the what sequence of the amino acids are there and what R groups are being uh, you know uh, hanging one after the other and what kind of interactions and hence the difference in the structure of the protein. Basic protein structure to all the protein structure are forming peptide bonds and they in this way. But how the protein structure different protein structures of protein function will differ from protein function so different kinds of enzymes and not only on this basis this is the first basic on the basic of primary structure this structure secondary structure tertiary structure and quaternary structure also quaternary structure different kinds of cofactors and many things are attached different as other elements are groups are attached and make the protein a complete globular protein now the understanding of the study of proteins study of structure of protein is complex okay but however we have understood this is a simple that how a protein structure may differ from protein structure and why a protein structure is dependent on the uh, sequence of the what kind of amino acids are there in the peptide chain and also it is dependent on the uh, what we can say other structures also and also how one differs from the other because of the difference of the sequence so that is what i wanted to say you now going back to my first thing now what was I saying? What is a gene? A particular gene is produced from a particular sequence of a, a DNA. Okay, nucleotide sequence. Now what happens is, I will tell you. In your cell, in your cell, suppose there is, I am sorry for this page. In your cell, suppose there is DNA inside the nucleus. Okay. In your cell, suppose there is DNA inside the nucleus. Okay. Now, DNA inside the nucleus is in very complex chromatin form. Complex chromatin form. Fine. Condensed. And even more condensed when cell division occurs. Okay, they form chromosome at that time. So that is different thing, condensed. Now, in a such as already DNA is a helix. Okay, already DNA is a helix. Now, in this helix, a particular sequence of a particular strand is known as the gene. And now, in the one DNA, which is a very long DNA, I will talk about the length of the DNA. Okay, which is a very, very, very long DNA okay maybe there can be multiple number of genes okay gene 1 gene 2 there can be multiple sorry not like this in this way you should show the sequence gene 2 okay and giving rise to different proteins okay so now these genes are in a very much condensed and super coiled form because they are much more condensed in a chromatin thread in a chromatin thread okay now what happens is that this super coility or the you know condensity is gets little bit untangled 
and you know opens up and what happens the portion where the gene is there from where a particular character now here particular character means particular protein and lots of gene may be giving rise to lots of protein which are signaling in the cell and signaling among each other and giving rise to a particular character okay uh, suppose for example uh, i am growing tall why am i growing tall because my maybe my hormone secretion that is the you know somatotropic hormone somatotropic hormone that is the growth hormone is very high eh? why it is very high because maybe some kind of proteins are synthesized from our from my gene of tallness or multiple genes of tallness which is lying in this place of the chromosome maybe in this way in class 10 you have seen that in this place of the chromosome maybe it is lying and from there it is uh, coding another homologous chromosome is there okay and it is in this place another same allele form all these things were in class 10 so and they are coding so actually it is in highly super coiled form chromosome is a but i am showing the open form in the open form this is one gene one gene and they are giving rise to protein and those proteins are signaling among themselves entering the cell coming out of the cell doing various kinds of metabolism and chemical reactions and chemical signaling and making my somatotropic hormone more and that's why i'm growing tall so basically this character is responsible on proteins and the proteins are responsible on the genes okay so that is what but when the genes are being expressed when the genes are being expressed they are opened from their supercoil that portion where the gene is lying from their supercoil okay or condensed form opened now why now why this is happened that only i will tell you what actually happens is you know if i ask you a question that how how uh, the genes gives rise to the protein how the genes give rise to the protein now what happens is that a specific sequence is there suppose a t g c c t g t t c c t a a a g g c t t c c t g a particular sequence is there now what will happen it is a dna sequence though it is taken from one strand now here one enzyme will come known as rna polymerase rna polymerase means naam sun ke lag raha hai ki rna banayega theek hai rna banayega to isko pura ekdam read karega aur isme se process hai jis process ko hum log bolte hain transcription kya karega transcription matlab dna ka ek strand se jo ya phir gene se gene ko pakad ke wo aise read karega aur ye ek enzyme hai this is an enzyme okay this is an enzyme which will do transcription the process of transcription a process a complex process will occur inside the cell in the nucleus and will give rise to a rna not a dna but a rna it is just as if copy karke न्यूक्लियस से बाहर निकाल देता है ये जो इंटायर प्रोसेस ऑफ ट्रांसक्रिप्शन है ये न्यूक्लियस के अंदर होता है ठीक है न्यूक्लियस के अंदर किसके लिए यूकैरियोट के लिए होता है फॉर यूकैरियोट क्योंकि आपको पता है यूकैरियोटिक सेल में न्यूक्लियस होता है उसके अंदर डीएनए रहता है लेकिन अगर प्रोकैरियोट है तो डी जो है वो ऐसे बीच में होता है कोई वेल डिफेंट न्यूक्लियस होता है तो वहाँ पर प्रोकैरियोट के लिए साइटोसॉल में ही होता है मतलब साइटोप्लाज्म में यहीं पे होता है ठीक है क्योंकि तो द इंटायर न्यूक्लियर आई मीन द जेनेटिक मेटेरियल और द डी इज इन द मेरी लॉन्ड्री सो वॉट एपन सीज ट्रांसक्रिप्शन ऑकर्स इन न्यूक्लियस इन केस ऑफ यू करियोट्स एंड इन द साइटोसोल ओनली इन केस ऑफ प्रो करियोट्स सो हाउ एवर द आर एन ए कम्स आउट यू कॉल दिस आर एन ए मिसेंजर आर एन ए 
why you call this RNA messenger RNA? Small m RNA. Sir, why RNA? Because it is easy. Now, what happens is just when it is synthesized, A ke jaga mein A jata hai, just copy hota hai, lekin T ke jaga mein U aata hai. G ke jaga mein G, C ke jaga mein C, C ke jaga mein C, T ke jaga mein phir se U aa jayega. Is sequence ko follow karo, isko copy kar raha hoon mein. Phir T ke jaga mein U, yahan tak copy kar liya. G, phir G hai. फिर वहाँ पे गलती से टी यू लिख दिया था क्योंकि मेरे दिमाग में आने चल रहा था तो टी है टी तो टी के जगह में यू ठीक है फिर सी सी फिर सी सी तो उसके बाद हो जाएगा यू फिर ए ए ए आ जाएगा जी जी सी यू यू सी सी यू जी ए ये पूरा जीन कॉपी होके आ गया इसको हम लोग मैसेंजर आर बोलते हैं क्योंकि देखो ये सीधी बात है यहाँ पर आर का सिक्वेंस है और आर में ही यू रहता है प्रीवियस वीडियो में देखो तो जैसा मैं बता रहा था तो मैसेंजर आने ये क्लियर दिख रहा है कि ये मैसेंजर आ रहे हैं मैसेंजर क्यों क्योंकि मैसेंजर नाम है क्योंकि मैसेज लेके आ रहा है ना तो जीन का एंटायर सीक्वेंस आ गया और सर ऐसा क्यों होता है ऐसा क्यों होता है क्योंकि तुम अगर इसी सीक्वेंस से डायरेक्ट प्रोटीन बनाना चाहोगे तो न्यूक्लियस के अंदर घुस के उतना कॉम्प्लेक्स स्ट्रक्चर के अंदर कैसे बनाओगे है ना तो इसीलिए उस वो पोर्शन सिर्फ खुल जाता है जैसे मैंने बताया है कि ओपन अप हो जाता है और वहाँ से जीन के पोर्शन से ये न्यूक्लियस से न्यूक्लियर पोर्स से मैसेंजर आने बाहर निकल के साइटोप्लाज्म में चला आता है सर so, साइटोप्लाज्म में आने का क्या जरूरत है साइटोप्लाज्म में आने का जरूरत है क्योंकि राइबोसोम वहाँ पे है बताता हूँ और इसका तो साइटोप्लाज्म में ही हो रहा है यूकरियोट प्रोकरियोट का तो साइटोप्लाज्म में आ जाता है ना अब क्या हो रहा है कि ये मैसेंजर आने न्यूक्लियर पोर्स से निकल के आ गया ये मैसेंजर आने एक्चुअली बनाने का यही उद्देश्य था कि एंटायर प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस कैन नॉट गो इन द न्यूक्लियस Because the ribosomes are important for protein synthesis or making protein, which are in the cytoplasm. So now, what happens is that the messenger RNA is being this is transcription, and the, from the messenger RNA there will be production of protein, which is known as translation, which is also a complex process. And what happens is. The this this is done. The process of translation is done when the messenger RNA. This is the messenger RNA template. This is the messenger RNA template or the strand. Ribosomes hold it. Ribosomes hold it with two with subunits. In case of uh, uh, I think you know that in case of prokaryote there is 70s ribosome. There is S is with but unique. And in case of eukaryote there is 80s ribosome. That is also with but unique. So they have two subunits. I think 50s and 40s. and it has two sub unit uh, uh i forgot the sub units anyway so anyway i will tell you in the cell chapter or you can see it in the internet so two sub units are there two sub units hold it like this okay and when they hold it like this entire the polyribo uh, polyribosome structure they form a polyribosome structure they form and when the polyribosome structure is formed then what happened after the polyribosome structure is formed with the help of a special type of rna known as trna okay or transfer rna which acts as an adapter which acts as an adapter of physics okay the electric electrical adapter adapter means which will you know help to convert adapter means help to convert that is an adapter okay so now what will happen through the help of messenger rna reading this sequence a u g c c u g u c c now they will read the sequence like this when they will read three together it is known as a codon when they will read three three together they will the uh, transfer rna which will convert okay the transfer rna will come and it will read this okay and according to this message it will put a amino acid a u g will mean one amino acid c c u u and the transfer rna will come it will mean another amino acid this much will mean so every codon these are known as codons okay codons these are known as codons so every codon will give rise to a amino acid and that amino acid will come one after the other and they will bond up like this and hence the r group will be r group and they will interact and then hence there will be a secondary then tertiary structure and the protein structure will definitely depend on the sequence of this 
Yes or no? The protein structure will entirely depend on the sequence of this. And if the sequence changes, the codons changes, 3-3 karke read kar read kar raha hai, wo bhi change ho jayega, to it will entirely depend on this. So that is how the protein structure is dependent on the sequence of amino acids because how the R groups will internet, uh, will um, interconnect or you know interact and form the different three-dimensional structure. It depends on the sequence of the amino acid and sequence of the amino acid depends on the sequence of the nucleotide base pairs. And that's why that is known as gene which gives rise to our character i hope that this is clear so this is only known as central dogma so if the entire thing is clear to you this entire thing that just now i have taught the entire thing is clear to you then you will understand that you know, what is happening is at first there is dna and when the dna gets converted into messenger rna okay then it is known as transcription And messenger RNA gets converted into protein, which is known as translation. And the various proteins give rise to character. Right or wrong? So, this much is known as the central dogma. Now, one step is left. That is when cell division occurs, copy of DNA occurs. DNA copying or DNA replication. So that is also involved. So three processes are involved in the center. This entire thing is known as central dogma of life or molecular biology. Central dogma of molecular biology. Okay. So based on the basis of this only, the everything happening. So three processes are involved. DNA replication during cell division. DNA copies into DNA. Transcription and production and translation and production of protein. And hence expression of character. So this is known as the central dogma of molecular biology and the idea of genes. Okay, I hope that I have been able to make myself clear. And as I said, every photograph will go to you. Okay, so I want to end my video here only.